The year is 1972. The final Apollo mission to the moon has just been completed, and President Nixon has announced a new American spacecraft. This the largest spacecraft ever launched by man, the first winged spaceship. The world's first reusable spacecraft. The Space Shuttle, capable of carrying several astronauts as well as large satellites into Earth's orbit. This new idea for a reusable spacecraft was meant to drastically reduce the cost of getting into orbit. And although the Space Shuttle did complete hundreds of successful missions, it never really lived up to everything it promised to be. Today, we have SpaceX making another attempt to cut the cost of getting into space. But what are they doing differently? How do we know the BFR won't become another Space Shuttle? In this video, we're going to compare the BFR to the Space Shuttle. We are also going to look at what caused the shuttle to fail and what SpaceX are doing to avoid the BFR having a similar fate. From the very beginning, the Space Shuttle was designed to be reusable and cheap to operate. During the development of the shuttle, NASA estimated that the entire cost for the 14-year lifespan of the shuttle would be around $45 billion with the cost of each flight being around $54 million. NASA's original estimates fell very short. This was largely due to the incredible amount of refurbishment needed after each flight. The original idea was to have the shuttle quickly checked out between each flight, just like an airliner. This turnaround process was expected to take around two weeks. However, it would usually take around three months. Many months later, Get on with it! Get on with it! Each of the three RS-25 engines had to be detached and refurbished after each flight. And since the propellants used for the RCS thrusters were so toxic, no other activity could be carried out on the shuttle while they were being handled. One of the most time-consuming aspects of the shuttle's refurbishment was the heat shield with each of the 35,000 tiles having to be inspected individually between each flight. SpaceX planned to use a material called Pika-X for their heat shield. Although this material is designed to wear away slowly after each flight, SpaceX are aiming to get hundreds of uses out of it before it needs to be completely replaced. If SpaceX want the BFR to succeed in being cheap and reusable, they will need to master the art of rocket reusability. The Falcon Heavy in fully reusable mode is currently capable of carrying a similar payload capacity to the shuttle, but for a fraction of the cost. But even if they do master rocket reusability, they will need to do so without compromising on safety. One of the biggest problems in the space shuttle program actually had nothing to do with the vehicle at all. It was in fact NASA's attitude toward safety, which started to become more lenient in the 1980s. Due to an incredibly ambitious launch schedule, NASA's upper level management started to embrace what many called go fever. In order to meet these ambitious launch dates, possible safety hazards were ignored, which led to the space shuttle experiencing two fatal disasters. With the BFR aiming to make its first flight to Mars in 2022, it's extremely important that SpaceX don't follow a similar path of cutting corners in order to make their own deadlines. One thing that SpaceX have shown over the years is their ability to make quick changes to the design of their rockets. Andy Lambert of SpaceX once stated that no Falcon 9 was ever the same, with upgrades being made to every new rocket that rolled out of the factory. This rapid development allowed them to perfect the Falcon 9's propulsive landing technique. However, they also have had their share of failures, which won't be an option once they start launching humans on the BFR. Another thing that held the space shuttle back was the design and manufacturing process. The workload was spread across many different companies all over the country in order for the program to appear more attractive to Congress. This not only raised the cost of the program, but also added an extra layer of complexity to the entire construction of the shuttle. On top of that, NASA had certain stipulations for the space shuttle, often requiring outdated hardware to be used instead of developing a newer and more effective solution. 
Since SpaceX won't need to adhere to such specific requirements, they can design the BFR from a blank canvas. And with nearly everything being designed and manufactured by SpaceX themselves, every part of the vehicle will work together perfectly as intended. So although a lot of the hype surrounding the BFR does seem reminiscent to the conception of the space shuttle, it does seem like SpaceX are already starting off on a better foot. And if their success so far is anything to go by, we know the BFR would be very exciting. What do you think of the BFR? Will it live up to its goals or will it struggle to achieve the low cost and rapid reusability that it promises to have? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to contribute to Primal Space, please visit patreon.com slash primal space, where we will be doing a giveaway of a Saturn V Lego set once we reach 50 patrons. So make sure you're subscribed so you can join in the discussion as we continue to learn more about all things space. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh! <laughs>